this is Grace House, an orphanage that is neither here nor there, neither far nor near. Just a place in the middle of nowhere, yet somewhere. A place for children lost and for lost children. A simple house full of wonders where love is your caregiver and hope, well, hope's all they have. It is a week before Christmas and the children are doing their chores. search for the perfect gift. You see, this year, they decided to do Secret Santa, and out of the little they had, they wanted to give as if they had plenty. And thus, is this boy. This boy was brought here seven years ago by his mother when he was just three months old. Later we learned that the mother passed away right afterwards. For seven years, he has been a true joy to this little house. Always smiling, never complaining. He had a true heart of gold. Then, there's this girl, sitting in the corner by herself. Due to a traumatic accident, she became mute and isolated herself from the rest of the group. That boy is her secret Santa. It is Christmas Eve, and the exchange is at hand. All the children are excitedly anxious to give and receive their presents. But today, in a corner of the room, the smile and joy absent from his face. The boy is fingering a wooden cross hung around his neck while reading a letter that he has read thousands and thousands of times before. grow to be a great man of God that strives to be like Christ, for he is where true joy lies. My son, your father knows about you and will come to get you, but he cannot now. He embarked on a seven-year mission, so please be patient, for on your seventh year at Grace House, your father will come to take you home. The cross on your neck, never take it off, for by it your father will know you. I love you so much. Just have faith. Your father will come. I love you. With tears in his eyes for the thousandth time, he places the letter back into his pocket and wipes away his tears as he walks towards a group of kids who are ignorant of the sacrifice that is given. Children have just finished exchanging, and now the boy turns to give his gift. With a deep breath, he walks towards her. He takes off his cross and places it around her neck. And then immediately, a knock on the door resounded through the house. 
and there stood a man bearing gifts for all. The boy's father has arrived. He asks the kids to line up to receive a gift, and the boy lines up first. As he gives the gifts one by one to each of the children, his eyes are ever searching for a cross just like his. Finally, as the girl walks up to receive her gift, not knowing of the greater gift that awaits, the father spots a cross on her neck. He, taking her cross into his hands, realizes that this is his child's cross, and in no time, embraces. The tears streaming, whispers, my child, let's go home. Not knowing what he meant, but for the first time in a long time, joy begins to fill her heart. The embrace of a father. Now a child in hand and joy in his heart, he depart. And as they walk away, the girl realizes the immensity of the gift she has just received, turns and runs to the boy and insists that he take it back. But with compassion, his sober face hit so well, he told her to go, to go home with her father. And so she leaves with her gift with her father that she did not deserve. Through the cross, he gave her a new life. Through the cross, he gave her his father. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. 2 Corinthians 8-9. valuable gift that he could in his father's life. Yeah. I don't think I can even imagine giving up something that much. And I think that's why it's so hard to grasp what Jesus actually did for us uh, on the cross. <laughs> I mean, without that boy's sacrifice, that girl would have never experienced that kind of new love and life. I mean, that's exactly what Jesus did for us. I don't know, I just, I, I can't I don't understand how someone could do that for another person, you know? Uh, what, you mean you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that for me? Wait, <laughs> <laughs> okay. you would for me? Yeah, I know. I mean, we are pretty close friends, like really close friends. You know, we were in family group together your freshman year. I uh, helped you transition into college. Um, we've had good laughs together, good times together. We MC together right, right now. <laughs> But Josh, I, I mean, that's all true and all, but, but we're talking about Jesus' love right now, which is a little bigger than whatever it is you're talking okay. about. Okay, alright, yeah, that's true. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, we're, we're really, really close friends, you know, we're really tight. And, I mean, sometimes we even finish each other's sentences. <laughs> Josh, I don't think we've ever finished finish each other's other sentences. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay, we have the last group come up, and Pastor Andy will then close us for the night. It's embarrassing. Okay, <laughs> 